Hi there guys, Gary here with JamVFX uh, and today we're back onto the 1x1s. Today we're talking about uh, a little element inside the modifiers and this modifier happens to be called Hook. Yes, Hook. That wonderful Disney film. No, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, no, yeah, it's... Um, it is literally, and I have all I want to say, yell out now is Rufio, Rufio, stopping. Um, so basically, the hook modifier allows you to uh, connect another object uh, or anything else as a controller to pull a bunch of vertices. Now, you can basically hook anything to anything. Uh, but the best way to do it is to take something like an empty because it doesn't render and it's a quite a good way of sticking things around. So just to show it all, I'm going to delete the default cube because why not? And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add another mesh and I'm going to add an icosphere. I'm going to pop open this and I'm going to just stick up the subdivisions just to three just to make it a little bit more obvious. So I'm going to move across and stick on wireframe just because I like to be able to see it in object mode and I'm going to edit mode and as you can see here we've got a nice big uh, a nice big bunch of vertices now I'm going to start by picking just that top one and I want to create a hook modifier now you can go like this and you can go a uh, hook and you go oh hang on I've got nothing to connect it to uh, I need an object to connect it to so let's say add a cube and uh, oh no I've added it to the object icosphere oh god and it gets all very confusing or oh, which is fine though it's okay or what you can do is if you just don't want something that doesn't render, just go Control H and hook to new object. And that basically creates you an empty which sits directly in the middle point of what you have selected. So in this instance, I've picked one vertice. So I'm only going to be able to pull around one vertice. So if I go to the object mode and do this and I pull this up, it only pulls at one vertice. Now that doesn't really help us a great deal because of all the wonderful things that are hidden underneath this little fall off controller. And obviously the strength is there, so it's like on, it's on, it's not, it's on, it's not. But what we can also do is you can add a hook to a vertex group if you want to create a group, or if you've got a group which you want to move around. Um, or you can just grab a bunch of vertices. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that, so we get rid of that and get rid of the hook there. And let's go to the side view and let's go to Z4 so it's transparente, uh, which isn't a real word. And I'm going to select all those ones there. I'm going to control H. I'm going to add a new hook object. Now you'll see it's gone into the middle of that group, like I just said. So if I go back to object mode and I lift this up, it lifts up all those vertices. Now what I can do is I can reduce the strength. So it takes them all in and out. Or I can adjust the fall off. And this is where you can actually get a little bit more control. Because if I take this down to two meters, so that's a one meter what that does it's not not quite right I want that top point to be touching that so let's go 1.1 1 .1, 1.2 that's just over so let's go 1.17 that's not bad okay so here's our empty and I move it up and down and we have kind of a, a, a an egg an egg of control you see what I mean so it's like I've got some fall off and you can change the type of the fall off so you can actually create it's it's very similar to proportional editing essentially but it's like live proportional editing so there's the root one and then there's the inverse square so that's got a little bit more eggness to it in fact than root or the smooth the sharp one which I've, is always quite neat especially if you're doing like a painting that's like a puncture sort of uh <laughs> even though you probably end up doing it with a soft body if we're all if we're perfectly honest and then a linear one, of course, which is very, very flattening. Um, and a constant, which is basically not having any fall off. There you go. So no fall off. So you've got all of that and that's all very good and dandy. So, uh, you know, empties are, they're quite handy. You can do quite a bit with them um, in that sort of that sort of setup, which is very, very nice. Uh, the other thing you can do with it, of course, is you can do stuff with curves, with hooks. Uh, and I'll very quickly show you that as well. So let's get all rid of all of that. Don't want any of that there at all. And let's add in here a curve and let's add a bezier. And what I will do is I will... Uh, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, and I want to add a hook to this. But the best way to do it, again, is very similar to the way you would do it, um, is to add by going Control-H. 
and there's a new hook on that one and then control H and there's a new hook on that one so now we're going back into object mode and we'll go back to our curve and let's just go into geometry and let's add some depth to it so we've got a nice little curve there like that and that's uh, let's fill some caps in there as well and now of course if I can move this it'll move that so you've got the sort of control that you'd have for a cable which is really really good you've got that ability to put things like that and you can then take take these hooks and you can connect these to say you know, a couple of connect them to a couple of points on the back of say um, a metal tank or something like that or even just as, as pieces of like almost like pieces of clothing onto pieces of clothing now the best thing about this is of course that you could then add another if you could get back to here go back to edit mode whoops go back to edit mode and there there they are that's the original curve so what i want to do is i want to actually subdivide these so let's go into here and let's add the subdivide don't know whether this is going to work let's just see so if i go back to object mode there you go that's in the middle there so let's go back to edit mode and with this selected let's give it a control h and add hook to a new object and then when I go back here to object mode, I can then take this hooked object and lift it up, bring it more in keeping with the other two, bring it in. Let's rotate it around so it actually has the same as the proper flow. Sort this out so it has the proper flow. If I can sort out the proper flow, I'm not even sure I can now. Ah, that looks a bit more promising. Yeah, what are we doing here? So as it's animating and traveling along, you can sort of like do some sort of jiggery pokery. So this actually sort of like does a boom, boom, boom. So you actually have it sort of like hanging down and have it animating at the same time. So it's got that sort of like little bit of a gravitational feel to it. That sort of like soft body-ish kind of thing, but without having the problems of a soft body. However, hooks are very good with soft bodies as well. So let's just very quickly create a new scene in fact no let's just let's just do it this way goodbye just a camera and lights and i'm going to add in here a grid now that's currently 10 by 10 which is fine but let's just make it 20 by 20 so we've got a few more points a bit more stuff to muck around with really and i am going to take this and i'm going to convert this into a cloth and if i press that it just drops okay well that's fine but say we wanted to, I don't know, say we wanted to create a little group, a pinned group. So I've got to create a pin and inside of there, it controls the shape of the object. So let's say I wanted to have uh, all of these ones on this back edge as uh, uh, an object, which basically will be pinned, which will not move when the gravity comes in. Okay, so what we're gonna do with that is we go into edit mode and we create essentially a vertex group and let's just set those ones there and we'll call this add this we'll assign those and we'll rename it pin lock for the sake of argument let's just select it deselect it and select it there you go it definitely is there so we go back now to our piece of geometry and right down here if we go past all of this and pass pressure and if we open up shape under there we've got pin group and i'm going to pick pin lock so now if I press this in edit mode, not object mode, of course, and there we go. And that now is the hanging group. Now that's great, that's great. But I want them to lift this up at the same time as that's dropping away. So I'm essentially, this is the, my controlling piece. Well, I need to be able to have some way of controlling that. And this is where hook comes into its own. So let's add uh, an empty, another plane axis. I'm gonna move it back to here. So it is essentially in the right spot for what we need to do. I'm going to go back to our cloth object here and I'm going to add a hook object and on this I'm going to add the empty and the vertex group is going to be our grouped pin lock and I'm going to press play now something odd is going to happen now yep it's locking the pin group but that's fine what happens if I take this empty and move it let's just see what happens so let's go back to the beginning here and let's insert the keyframe there just set that to zero. No, no, I was right before. I was absolutely right before. Uh, so let's replace keyframe. Let's go to frame 30 and let's lift this up. 
Now you can see it's pulling up our points. That looks great. That means that's kind of going to work. So let's go I to save all of those in there. Let's go back and let's play it. No. No, it doesn't like it. It's pulling those vertices, but it's not affecting the cloth. And the reason for that is the order of events, as it were, the order of the modifiers in here. Cloth has to be underneath the hook. So the hook takes precedent and then the cloth follows suit. So now what will happen is it'll get lifted up. There you go. So that's how you can basically use hooks to control how your cloth works. Now, of course, you've only got one pin uh, that you can group, that you can use. But what you can actually do with the cloth, which we'll come back to at some point, is um, you can use a, a collection of items. So you can put different items into the collection and then they can each be moved independent of each other. So that's a, a very, very good way of doing it. But there you go, that's that's relatively quick and a uh, quick look around the use of hooks. And I mean, you know, I mean, for this case, it's quite good because you say if you had a, if it was, if you rolled up your object, you can actually do it as if you're lifting up a sail on a ship and then have another couple of pins in the bottom here that you just lock down the corners and then you put wind behind it and whoosh, whoosh, you get that little bit of like that special whoosh. Yes. In fact, very quickly, I just want to see, because I'm not entirely certain this is going to work, but what I want to do now is I just want to come over here at this keyframe and I'm going to scale this in like that. So let's, and of course it's not working in object. It's not in object mode properly. There we go. So let's uh, set that back to one. Come over here. I'm going to uh, put a keyframe in those. Let's go back over here to 30. And let's just bring that in a bit like that. There we go. And press I. And let's see what happens this time. And there you go, and it pops it back. So actually you can use it for pinching things in as well. So it's quite good, isn't it? Quite good. I quite like that. You can do all sorts of fancy things. And then of course you can go object, it's shade smooth. And you can go down here and you can set your uh, normals to auto smooth. And then it's even better, you can come over here and we can add a subdivision service modifier. And essentially it's all nice, all nice and smooth with shadows and whatnot. There you go. So yeah, you know, pins, handy things, not pins, hooks. Pins too, but hooks, fancy things, very useful, and uh, we like them a lot. Anyway, there you go. Um, I hope that's uh, any help to anyone out there in relation to how to use a hook, how to create a hook, and how to use it in things like soft bodies. It's particularly good for soft bodies, I think. Um, if you want anything, any other help with anything, or you just come up with an idea and say, how does this work, Gary? Can you tell us? Can you let us know? Then do that, please. Let me know. You can contact me via a comment on here. Uh, you can contact me by my website, um, which is www.gen-vfx.com. You can leave comments there. And also, you can drop me a line on Instagram. I am at genvfx on there as well. So just just give me a call. Drop me in. Oh, and also on Twitter, uh, at g-e-n-o-d-e-n. G Noden, that's the one. G E Noden, basically. Uh, so take care, guys, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Pass on the deets to anybody else you think this might be useful to, and uh, hopefully catch you on the flip side. Take care. Bye. <laughs>